I think that's how we have to start episode seven of On the Air with FDT TV. I am Ian, aka Ronaldo, and I'm uh, Mike, yeah, aka you. Fat Bloke. <laughs> um, so Ronaldo is back. Um, well and truly, obviously he was back before the international break finished, but first game back and back with a bang. Back with a bang. We'll get on to that later, so make sure you stick around to hear all about that side of Manchester. Really, the other side's blue in it, and they're doing all right as well. Uh, but first of all, if you haven't already, go over to our YouTube channel and subscribe. We are getting ever so closer to the 100 subscriber mark, and that is what our aim is before the end of the January transfer window. So if you can help us reach our goal, it would be much appreciated. But Arsenal are now off the foot of the table. Was you at the foot of the table? You wasn't quite there, was yes. you? You was. No, we were. You were yep. there, rock, absolute rock bottom. But yep. you took on your arch nemesis relegation 6.0 in Norwich um, and came out with a 1-0 win. Now, some Arsenal fans will say that's not good enough. Others will say, I'll take three points, thank you very much. What side of the fence do you fall on, Mike? Three points, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was a much-needed win. We, for, for that particular game, it was one of those ones, Norwich gave us a good game. Yep. Um, and I think, as shown with Brentford, the newly promoted teams are, kind of, are try, trying to give it a damn good go. Obviously, you mentioned last week about Norwich potentially being a yo-yo club uh, for the next couple of years. <laughs> so they've been up, down, up, down. But they, I'll, give them, I'll give them their dues. They did play really well. They defended really well uh, for the large portions of the game. They threatened the goal a couple of times. But I think one of those um, it's one of those games where we had to kind of dig deep in order to get the three points and get the goal um, because they were just resilient. And it took a bit of fortune on our side of things in order to get to get that goal. And I think we need to kind of look at it as <clears throat> the first three games of the season were stricken by injuries, COVID, and all that sort of stuff. A series of unfortunate events. And then you're looking at taking on the champions of Europe versus the champion or the current champions of the Premier League. They're always going to be tough games. Um, we weren't at our full strength. Now, obviously, we have made some recruitment into the team and quite a few of those made their... Uh, sorry, were playing in that particular game. Takira Tomiyasu, he played his first game for Arsenal. Yep. Looked really good. Uh, was bombing up and down the wings. To be honest, I actually thought it was going to be too soon for him to uh, to make his debut. But um, obviously, he's uh, a player that has apparently been scouted for quite a while uh, and apparently is one of Mikel Arteta's signings. And um, I, I'll tell you what, if he can keep up his um, keep up that form that he showed at the weekend, then fair play to him. I think he's going to be uh, quite a good player. Yep. Very defensive-minded. Um, I've got a bit of pace about him. From what I've seen, he has got uh, a shot on him as well. Um, he's made some good overlapping runs with Pepe, Pepe down the right-hand side. So it's looking promising. Uh, obviously, Sambi Lukonga was also in the game as well. Um, one of the midfielder uh, recruitments that we made, obviously Granite Jack are out. And we saw the return of Thomas Partey as well into the second half as well. So uh, Ben White was obviously back as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm hoping such word that this is um all going to be moving in the right direction now so yeah we shall see what happens i mean i i, I did make a few notes for the arsenal game obviously your first three points which is always a bonus a clean sheet which i think is um actually more more present or, or more present that's not the right word but it's, it's a better accolade than actually winning the game is, is keeping a clean sheet for the first time this season um mm -hmm. ramsdale was in goal was yes. it so I think, but that's the end of Burnt then our Arsenal. I, I will be honest. I, d I don't think it was the most convincing of wins, if I'm honest. But, but wins a win, uh, and when when you yeah. are struggling and and confidence is low, um, as you said, you got to take the three points. West Ham have been there over time and time again, so I know exactly how you are feeling. Um, yeah. I, I, go on. Sorry. No, go on. Go on. I was just I was just going to say on the the whole Burnt Leno thing. 
there have been um, rumours that have kind of circulated over the last couple of transfer windows in that um, he's potentially unhappy with uh, the current situation at Arsenal and has supposedly looked to to get out anyway. Yeah. Um, obviously, Aaron Ramsdale come out on social media or to his friends and said, it won't be long until I get the number one jersey. And again, he looks, for a player so young, um, but with the amount of experience that he's got in the Premier League already, he looks really good. He's very commanding. Um, I think he, he's, he's a good shot stopper. Yeah. I, he's, I think he's he's definitely one for the future. Definitely. He, he's been relegated two out of the last two seasons. Um, and when I mean, West Ham were linked to him at one point, but were priced out of it. And you, you paid a fair whack for him, for a mm -hmm. goalkeeper who... Some would say he's not the standard because otherwise he'd be able to keep obviously teams in the league, a bit like Dean Henson did with Sheffield United. Mm -hmm. um, but I think with, um, you know, in hindsight, it's taken a, a, a few weeks to, to actually think about it in a, a more logical fashion rather than just go over gut and think, oh, you must be shit. Actually, to, to sit and think about it. Um, with facing the amount of shots that he faced, and the poor having the poor defence in front of him, um, and being low on confidence throughout, or, or, or the team was. He's always seemed to be when you look back on it, quite quietly confident about his own abilities. Um, and actually, yep. he's faced twice as many shots as what some of the keepers in obviously the top half of the table face, um, which keeps him on his toes. And actually, it means he he is improving because he's he's got to be making those saves over and over again. So I think in the long term, I, you are right. One for the future, definitely. But I, th I think that future is going to start now. Um, and we may see uh, one of the better keepers um, for Arsenal in a long time. I think last decent keeper you had was Petr Cech. Mm -hmm. um, and then before that, you, you, you've got to go back, really, haven't you, to David Seaman? Uh, Yes, but you could also argue Jens Lehmann as well. I know he was only there for a few seasons, yeah, but yeah. Um, I think he was uh, critical in terms of the Invincible season. But after the Invincible season, I'm not saying he was a terrible keeper, but there were some mistakes in, in his game. Yes. It's kind of like the whole Bern Leno situation, um, that he was outstanding for his first couple of seasons, but has... Obviously, there's some uh, complacency. I think is going to be the best word to yes to to put in terms of uh, Ben Leno because there's I think one of his fundamental flaws uh, is that don't get me wrong, he's a brilliant shot stopper. He can't dive left. <laughs> that and um, his weakness is playing out from the back. Yep. And I know it's something that Arteta is looking to kind of. Uh, implement at the club and we have seen it for the last few years however that's one of the the, the places where it, it's kind of been our sticking point yep. because as soon as you put a bit of pressure on him we see it against Brentford, Brentford is a perfect example of it where we were trying to play out from the back um, and you could see the defence getting aggravated with Burn Leno for not going long when he should be going long um, but again that could be a confidence thing obviously because we had a bit of a up and down pre-season but again, this this could be, as you mentioned, obviously if uh, Aaron Ramsdale does get a run of um, run of games, it's it's going to apply that pressure to Ben and to kind of up his game again. Um, yeah, I'm fighting for that number one spot. So you, I don't think you can drop Aaron Ramsdale for the time being. Obviously, it was was his first game, first clean sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, first Premier League game, first clean sheet. And he he was he was solid. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Yeah. So as am I, if I'm honest, as am I. Um, the other notes I have got are short notes. Tommy Asu, um, I think was only plus points, especially for the first half. Um, one of the better players on the pitch, and looked like a decent signing. So uh, mm -hmm. wait wait to see. Um, obviously, if he when he you come up against a bit more technically gifted opposition, um, as a whole team, how he how he goes then but actually I think he was all the positive points of Bellerin with none of the negatives being defensively yeah, yeah. Um, yep. so, so I do think that's good. Um, I have here VAR goes for Arsenal um, 
that's to do with the goal. Obviously, they scrutinise it quite heavily. Mm -hmm. um, I think they made the correct decision, if I'm totally honest. Obviously, the ball wasn't played to Aubameyang. Um, it, it hit the post to come back to Pepe, and then it was sort of a, a jamble as to going for goal. And he was behind the play the whole time. Um, so, obviously, a bit of a scrappy goal, uh, you have to say. But one hundred percent. But correctly given as a goal. Um, yep. And and say I, the, the comment I have got here, obviously did mention it just earlier. Was it wasn't a convincing win? Um, and a Grant Hanley uh, definitely isn't Premier League quality because it was his mistake that allowed, obviously, the opportunity to score that scrappy goal. But I have I have preference this with I don't think it will be as easy at Burnley. No, I completely agree. Um, That's, um, it's it's going to be a tough game, and it's a, a way as well. Yeah. And obviously, I know we had last season. I think was one of our better seasons where we have played better away than we have at home. Um, but I'm I'm interested to see how. Um, how we will go to Burnley. Obviously, yep. it's it's one of those games. I think we have one more recently. One more, or so one more games recently than we have um, lost or drew. But there have been a few draws and losses within that. So, yeah, um, yeah it's it's definitely going to be a tough a, a tough, tough game. Yep, with um, Sean Dosh. Yeah, but say. Uh, 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 Obviously, other than scoring more, is there anything you would, if you could, you could say to the Arsenal dressing room at the moment? What would you, what would you say to them as a fan? <clears throat> no stupid mistakes. Um, and this is this is that whole playing out from the back business. Uh, it's it's kind of been a bit of a linchpin for us, uh, as I mentioned earlier. There've been a few times where we've been caught out um, trying to play this stupid out from the back business. Um, and again, if if we can think properly, go yeah. along where we should be going along when we're under pressure, just to alleviate some of that pressure. Or if you want to have the confidence to play out, then play out from the back. But I think looking at our defensive record from last season, I think in 2021, we had the third best defensive uh, record the only bettered by Chelsea and Manchester City. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the defence has been the issues. It's been the lack of goals. Um, so we need to keep creating the chances. Um, and eventually, obviously, the confidence will, will come back and we'll start hitting the onion bag again. But, um, yeah, so no no stupid mistakes and keep keep up with the, um, the shots. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. We then moved on, didn't we, from... Uh, the Emirates over to St Mary's, where we see a board draw with West Ham Southampton. Um, not really much to say about it. I have I have put a few notes in there. First one was tired looking performance, um, and that's with a lot of players from West Ham coming back from international duty. Pablo Fornells in an interview since has said they had two days together, so obviously everyone goes off to international duty and. Some people don't maybe eat what they should eat and, and are not on the straight, same training schedule as what they were, so they get a bit lackadaisical. And with only two days uh, being back together from international duty, that's why the performance was a little bit uh, lesser than what we've been used to seeing recently. We didn't create enough chances. Uh, that, that That's number one. We, we didn't create enough chances. And I think we got caught out by speed a lot. Um, there are positives, though. There are positives. Bowen looked dangerous. I think he uh, he was very good last season, and I think he's going to be one of those players who is dangerous all season. Um, he just needs to be a bit more clinical, um, but he's always a hard worker. And Vlasic, when he came on uh, for Ben Rama, was, again, really hard working. Um, and he looked, he looked sharp. He looked good. Uh, if he keeps up the hard work, then obviously the West Ham faithful will be right behind him. Um, so that's mm -hmm. good. We were saved by the post. Um, that has to be said. Uh, Fabianski should have covered it. But he, again, in this game, very flat-footed, uh, very slow to, to get down to, to dive. 
Um, and then he was also beaten again, being flat-footed at a corner, um, sort of just waiting for it to see where it was going. No anticipation in him at all. Uh, fortunately, Declan Rice was on the line to clear it. So, again, saved by Captain Fantastic. Um, what I do want to see is Ariola to start versus Manchester United. Um, much with like yourself, with, with Leno, it's very much he's done a, a, a very decent job for us, Fabianski. Uh, but actually, he's not looking as good as he was. Um, don't know what that is. Is that playing too many games? Is that pressure from outside? Is that it could be any, any number of reasons? Um, but he just doesn't look the same as what he did. Um, the other thing, Antonio, what a silly boy! What a silly boy! Tackling the ninety-second minute for his second yellow was actually in Southampton's box, so it was totally needless. Didn't need to be made. Uh, got his second yellow, so he's going to miss the next game, which is not great. Part of me thinks is that tactical um, from maybe not David Moyes' point of view, because actually you want that sort of player up against Manchester United, who previously has been a bit frail defensively. Uh, but from his point of view, it's going to be a hard game. He's going to be isolated. Does he want to play it? Probably not. Um, not saying he did get sent off on purpose, but longevity reasons, maybe. However, two wins, two draws from four games. I'm not going to complain. We haven't lost. We're, we're still undefeated. Yes, I would have liked to have seen a win, but another point in the bag is, is good for me. Happy with that. Okay, so following off and out, obviously you have got you just mentioned Antonio out for the next game. Who do you see filling him, filling in for him against United? Um, sorry, let me put my teeth back in. There's a number of options. Um, you could see that Yarmolenko. He played there for Ukraine in the Euros and was quite effective. He's not the same sort of player that he is for us, um, as he is for Ukraine, which is a shame. So we could see him step in. We could see um, a slightly different formation, maybe go three at the back um, and see Ben Rama play as sort of like a false number nine, a bit like Firmino at Liverpool. Um, mm -hmm. Or we could see Nikola Vlasic slot in there. Uh, playing a similar role, can drop deeper into midfield and then push forward. Um, that's, that's my bet. It's going to be one of those three things. I, I do believe looking at Obviously, the Manchester United result, playing free at the back, probably wouldn't be a bad idea, especially with Kurt Zuma being an absolute monster. Um, <laughs> you know, we don't want to lose at set pieces. Actually, Kurt Zuma's got a bit of speed about him, and one certain Ronaldo is still really quick. So, <laughs> not saying we want to set up to like take a point, but... Let's take a point out of this game. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's, that was going to be my next question. This um, is this one that you're just going to have to set up to uh, to defend for your life for 90 minutes and try and catch on a counter or a I lucky think, set piece. If I'm honest, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, and, and West Ham fans don't like it. I think some of them want to see us go for it in every game, but then moan when we if we were to get tonked. It's a bit like Leeds, isn't it? Everyone says, oh, Leeds need to find a new tactic in it against a big squad. Well, actually, no, their tactic is we play how we play. Uh, every now and again, we're going to get turned over because that's the style we, we do it. But we don't we don't stop and we just continue in the next game and we get a result. Um, mm -hmm. I think David Moyes is maybe a little bit more, <clears throat> not complacent, but um, has his eye on we need to make sure tactically we're playing this game for a point. We're playing this one for three points. We're playing this one to sort of damage limitation in a certain yep. degree. But yeah, I'll take a point. My my next question is is kind of going away from the game. Is, okay. In fact, in fact, I'm I'm done with questions on that game. But it's kind of linked into your next game ish. Okay, go on. So go obviously, <clears throat> so obviously your next game is against Manchester United. 
which we'll come on to the predi predictions mm -hmm. again shortly. Yep. Um, but at the start of the video, obviously, we mentioned one uh, Cristiano Ronaldo uh, going back to... I, I, well, some would say where it all began for him. Yes. Um, he started the game and looked incredible. Let's yes. be honest. Yep. did look incredible. Um, my question to you is, I believe he's been given a two-year contract mm -hmm. at Manchester United, which would take him up to his 38th birthday. Yep. Obviously, looking at how fit he is, would you say that that was a good bit of business for Manchester United or... Do you think that he has to slow up at some point? <laughs> um, right. There's multiple schools of thought on this because obviously he's now, you would look at it saying he's coming to the twilight of his career. So is this sort of his last hurrah? He's been there and done that in, in every conceivable league apart from the German league, um, if, if, if I'm correct, um, that I can think of, obviously, in Europe. Um, he genetically... Is lucky, I suppose you could put it that way. Uh, but but when you look at his physique and his um, athletic ability, that has got better since he was last in the Premier League. Um, and that goes down to solely him and his work ethic. Um, so, for, as I said last week, I think that will rub off. Um, we've already seen the United team following his diet. They're all asking, what's he eating? What's he got on his plate? Is he having afters? And they're all following that. Because, actually, for someone to be, what, what did you say he is, 30, 30, 36. 36. To be 36 years old, in that shape of his life, and still rinsing everybody, not only is that talent, but that is he's looked after himself. Um, yeah, I just think, the winning mentality, a bit like when Rashford, that first season Rashford come through, they had Zlatan, didn't they, um, who helped him out. They had Cavani, sort of these elder statesmen of the game. Now they've brought back, as you, as they would say, one of their own in Ronaldo, who arguably is one of the best players in the world ever. But like there's, there's obviously the argument of Messi and Ronaldo, who's better, I think then they're, they're, they're tied for first, if I'm honest, um, in terms of best footballers, full stop, ever that the world has ever seen. Um, and I think the tutorage he can offer the rest of that squad, I think, if I'm honest, I think he's managing that squad now. Ollie's, Ollie's the face of Manchester United. He's the yes man. Man uh, Manchester United, that dressing room, uh, that, that match day squad is being run by Ronaldo. I think it's a fantastic bit of business. If 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 West Ham had signed him, I'd have been over the moon. You'd have to sell your stadium, though. Like, we don't, don't own, mate, own we don't own our stadium. <laughs> we'd have, we'd have, trouble, <laughs> trouble is that, that, that we'd, we we would have bought him right, and then we would have uh, we would have received a a, like a, a gift loan with one hundred and seventy thousand percent interest from from Golden Sullivan. <laughs> interestingly enough right he sold double the amount of shirts that um messi has at psg 178 million pounds worth of shirts in the first weekend fuck um so 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 he his cost of of actually bidding there is less than zero now isn't it because he's not earning 178 million pounds in two years he might be earning 100 million quid but you think he's also got his own sponsorships on top of that. He's not. He's not short of a few bob. Um, but yeah, I think. See, I didn't. I didn't business. think anything was going to top Omri coming back to to Arsenal when he did in 2012. And I know it was only for half a season whilst he was um, helping out. <clears throat> whilst it was uh, an off season in the MLS, so he was only with us for I think it was like 12. 12 games or yeah it wasn't the whole season was it whatever, whatever it was no and um for for me when Henri come on and scored against Leeds in the FA Cup yep. that was kind of like a magical moment and that will live with me until the day I die I still watch that video now and still get the same emotions as I had when watching that game that was absolutely brilliant but just to see I can I can imagine what it's like for 
Manchester United fans, obviously seeing a legend of your club um, come back and obviously get back to scoring ways. Yeah. And I think I think the difference is with Ronaldo is that he's obviously now on a full term commitment for the next couple of years, whereas that was kind of like a, a parting gift for Omri. It was basically a glorified like training session for for him for a, a few weeks to try and help Arsenal out. Um, so I, I can um, I can appreciate yeah. obviously the um, the excitement for um, for them coming back to yeah. For him coming back to Manchester United. And I think it's also a sort of a status thing, isn't it? We've just signed one of the best in the world. Um, And I think that will sway a number of players. I mean, Paul Pogba is in his last year of his contract. I wouldn't be surprised now they've said, look, we're going to bring in this player, we're going to bring in this player. I don't think they're going to stop at Ronaldo. I think come January, there'll be another big signing. Um, Obviously, you bought in Sancho for big money, bought in for Ran. So they've bought in quality players that have, have been there mm. and done it. Obviously, Sancho's still very young, but Varane's won everything. Um, he, he was part of that same squad as Ronaldo that won, what, three Champions League back-to-back. It's, it's, un, it's sort of unheard of in, in our lifetime. And I, I think they're going to sway, obviously, their bigger players, like Pogba, to sign on new contracts, which is only good mm. for Manchester United. I mean, he, he's been on another level this season. You add the world class around it, and a little bit of guidance because he's now no longer the biggest person in the dressing room. Um, I think, I, I do think they're going to, I don't think they're necessarily going to challenge the Premier League. I think they will slip up a few times. Um, and, and I think they will slip up against the sides that you don't expect them to. Um, but I do, I, I could see Manchester United winning Champions League this year. Uh, and maybe an FA Cup, um, just through Ren- manager Ronaldo. <laughs> that was that, that was going to be my next question. Obviously, it was one that we touched on briefly last week um, about Ronaldo going to mm. back to Manchester United. Do you, do you see them making it? Or them now being as title contenders? But it just answered the question. So I, I think the int- yeah. I think the interesting thing will be. He's obviously he is aging, and and yes, physically he's he's an absolute monster. Um, but can you see him playing fifty five games this year? Mm, probably not. And I think the, the trouble will come when he wants to start and he thinks he's fit enough. Uh, and Ollie, obviously, who is the manager, has to submit the team sheet, and he's either on the bench or he drags him off at sixty minutes. And I think that's where we'll start to see trouble at Manchester United. And once he's been upset by Solskjaer, because he's dragged him off or left him out, then I think that's where we're going to see the wheels come off. Because when he, when he says, I don't want to be here anymore because of your manager, one or two, play, one or two things is going to happen at that point. Either Oli Sol, Sol, Gunnar Solskjaer is going to be sacked, um, or Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is going to be sacked. Um, because this bloke is bringing in millions. He's bringing the world's eyes back to Manchester United, who have been out of the limelight for such a long time. Mm. He's, he's running the show. And, and with super agent Riola behind him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah. I'm, 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 we, we, we're playing them twice. Well, three times this year so far. Because we've got them in the cup as well, which I was really pissed off about. <laughs> I'd, I've got to be honest, mate. In the cup, I think it's going to be a youngsters team. I think focus for for United is going to be, as you said, Champions League and Premier League. Um, I don't think the League Cup is going to be top of their priorities. But mm. um, yeah, I think I think you might get one one out of one out of three. Um, as long as it's in the league, I'd rather it be in the league than the, the League Cup, if I'm honest. Um, but before we move on to further discussion and news, um, the points. We've had a, yes. a rather interesting um, unfolding this weekend because we did three games because Ronaldo is back. We did. Significant game. And we put uh, an 
an extra bonus points on that, didn't we? Yep. So give us an update. Yeah, we then. did. <laughs> okay, so <coughs> Arsenal taking on Norwich. Um, you had it down for a two-two draw. I had it down for a four, an optimistic four-one win. Uh, the score was one 0 Obviously, a Bamian score, so no points for you. One point for me for the correct result. Um, Southampton West Ham. Uh, you said it was going to be one three, so three one to West Ham. I said two two. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, it was a ball draw, so nil nil. So I get the correct result again. So one point for me, zero points to you. Manchester United versus Newcastle. Um, both of us said Ronaldo to score. Uh, you had five nil. I had four one. So that is one point to you and three points to me. So this week's totals are, Ooh. Ian, you have picked up one point. I have picked up five points. Mm. Uh, so for the overall season, that for a, a very abysmal start, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I'm hoping that my season was going to improve. And I have. I have caught you up already. So we are currently on six points each uh, going into this week's fixtures. Um, so touching on that, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Burnley take on Arsenal and West Ham United take on Manchester United. So we'll start with the Burnley Arsenal game. Yep. Um, I, as, as, as I mentioned earlier, I do think this is going to be a, a very tough game for us. I will have the, the preview video out for this week. Um, I don't think we are going to see many changes from this side. Um, that beat Norwich. I think we we have created or we created the most chances in uh, a game that we have done for quite a long time. Unfortunately, we just haven't been as clinical. Um, I don't think we picked up any injuries or anything. Obviously, we have got the rest of the week to go. So, but I don't anticipate any changes. Uh, obviously, Granite Jack is still out due to suspension. Um, but yeah, I think. We need to go away and get the three points on this one. So I am going to go. See, Burnley are just above us or just below us. They're, I want to say just below they're, us. They're below oh. you. They haven't won this year yet. And they've got a, okay, a, so a they've draw had, and two losses. It, two draws. Right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I th it's it's always a hard hard game going to uh, the Turf Moor. So I think... Do you know what? I am going to be optimistic. I'm going to say 2-1 to Arsenal mm. on this particular game. 2-1. I've gone for a very similar outlook, if I'm totally honest. Burnley to be more organised and harder to break down than Norwich. Um, and, however, I can see Sean Dyche bringing on sort of a defensive masterclass with a Chris Wood-headed goal going in against you. So I've gone 1-0 to Burnley. Okay. Yeah, I, I I can't see us not conceding. If I'm being completely honest, um, I will be more than happy with a clean sheet away from home. I yeah. don't see it happening, um, but I'm I'm hoping that the game against Norwich was the the kick on that we needed. Um, obviously, we did have a game behind closed doors um, against Brentford, as you mentioned last week, with a win. Uh, so hopefully, this will be the start of our season. So we scrapped the first three games, and our season goes from now. Um, moving on to the Sunday, I believe, is, uh, is West Ham take, take so, on Manchester United. We do. so, And it's also after our uh, obviously debut in the Europa League group stage. Um, no Antonio for this game. Uh, he's, he's a must. Ronaldo. Uh, I think we need to see Zuma and Ariola in the first team. I think the team will be tired after travelling... Uh, to and from Croatia to take on Dynamo Zagreb. Um, no, as I put, no, no Antonio. Uh, I did. I, I've got a feeling Vlasic is going to start. If I'm totally honest, and he needs to step up big time. A lot of pressure on a young man, but if he gives it his all, I'm sure he can crop up with a goal. Uh, and I've put. It's the sort of game that we shouldn't win, so we probably will. But I've gone. West Ham 2, Manchester United 3. Cool. That's, uh, to be honest, mate, that's not a bad shout. And I was I'm kind of teetering on that. Um, but obviously, as you mentioned, you have got the Europa League this week. No Antonio. Uh, I am going to go 4-1 to Manchester United. Well, providing we get Mankio in for, uh, from Newcastle on our like, 
emergency loan. Maybe he can score again for us. Um, but hopefully, I take the lead again, and you haven't kicked on a bit like Arsenal and got your first points of the season. <laughs> um, other things that have happened, obviously, in this week of football, Harvey Elliott. Uh, we see him get a dislocated ankle, one of those floppy ones that you look at and go, Ugh! um, yeah, but he's quite happy. Well, he's not happy about it, is he? But he, he, he's quite gracious about it. Patrick Schick, I think it's pronounced Schick, uh, from Leeds, um, has obviously said, Sorry, didn't mean to do it. I don't think there was any attempt at it. Liverpool fans are saying it was naughty challenge, red card definitely deserve, doesn't deserve to play football again. Da 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 da. I think it's actually going to get overturned. Um, I really do. I don't think there was any intent in it. I don't think it was necessarily dangerous. I think it was at high speed. Um, and it's just an unfortunate tackle uh, that, that the foot was planted rather than in the air. Um, I think a change of maybe two seconds and it, it would have just been a half knock. Um, but he's, he's had surgery on it. So dislocated ankle, hopefully no complications because actually he's looked a half decent player. He's looked quite exciting for Liverpool this year, as I'm sure most uh, Liverpool fans will agree. Uh, but what's your take on the red card? I, <laughs> I try, I, I'm kind of like drawing comparison to this one to, I think it was Son and um... Andre Gomez. <sighs> Thank you for Everton. Yeah. Um that I believe that red card was rescinded for Human Song. Um if I remember correctly. I believe yes, you might be right, yeah. Bit, I think you're right. It, I think it was just one of those unfortunate incidents. Um it's as you said it was high speed. There didn't look any malice in the challenge at all. And I think it was kind of similar to to Hyunmin Song with that particular tackle um which I think broke uh Andre Gomez's leg. Yeah. Um so I think he's he's fortunate in the sense that it was only a dislocation. So it what it's obviously not as bad as what was first feared. Um and we could see him return to the game fairly quickly ish. Yeah. Obviously, depending on how, how his rehabilitation goes, um, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm obviously not saying it's just because I want to have a, a dig at Liverpool fans. I, I do genuinely think it was just one of those unfortunate incidents, and um, the players obviously come out and apologised very quickly after the game. Um, and yeah, I, I don't think there's much you, much else he can do. Uh, obviously, if he got in two footed bit of a nutty boy challenge then obviously you could argue the the case but i think it was a genuine attempt to go for the ball and it was just one of those unfortunate incidents um yeah yeah i mean i've i've looked at harvey elliott since he he made his debut for fulham played one game for them um in the premier league uh and then he signed for liverpool been out on loan um he looks like the sort of geezer who is a complete shit out, and he's still only like seventeen years old, right? In my opinion, I think he will come back, and his return game will probably be against Leeds, and he will start. And in the first four minutes, he will two foot the geezer and go, "You did it to me, <laughs> I did it to you." Nah. Do you know what I mean? That's like, <laughs> let's get on with it, um, and let's all have a laugh and a pint. Do you know what I mean? That's the sort of guy he looks like, um, which just makes me laugh. More yeah. think about it. More, <laughs> more, more, more. I'm anticipating this, this him coming back and hitting our tackles. You know, um, but I know every, every, everywhere and everything is Ronaldo. Um, at one point there was 181 news stories a minute coming out with the word Ronaldo in a title. So I, I'm a little bit sick of hearing it. If I'm honest, Ronaldo, 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 Ronaldo. But he did score two goals at the weekend, and I just want to recap them. The first one was a tap-in, wasn't it? Um, right mm -hmm. place, right time, anticipation, know-how, where to be in the box. Tapped him. The second one was an absolute mad sprint from his own half. Fastest player on the pitch at 36 years of age, which is mad. Um, and then he nutmegged the keeper. 
He didn't. He didn't yeah. just put it in. He nutmegged the keeper at full sprint. Um, I have a feeling, and this might sound a little bit odd. I reckon he's going to end up top goal scorer of the Premier League this year. And a lot of people go, "No, nah, he's just jumping on the bandwagon." Mm. We've still got Harry Kane in the league. We've got Lukaku in the league. Timo Werner's Salah. probably not going to be up there. Salah, yeah, definitely up there. Um, but I think Ronaldo is going to come back and stake a claim to being the best ever. Um, Messi's gone to France, right? Which arguably is the easier league, the less competitive league, uh, week in, week out. So should score double the amount of goals that Ronaldo's scoring because of the play if you look at on paper the PSG team is much more dangerous than the Manchester United team but I think Ronaldo's come back to to, to prove it in media's hardest league most competitive league in the world um, and show everyone that he's the best hmm yeah, that's a fair point. And obviously, if he carries on with the way he started, I, I know obviously n- not every game is going to be uh, a four-one. There's there's probably going to be some hard-fought games within um, within the season, or you would expect there to be some hard-fought games over the season. And obviously, because of his age, you you have to consider potential injuries and stuff like that. But obviously, looking at his physique, it would be. Um, hard to kind of discredit him and um, from what we've already seen from this particular oh, from the first first game back he he did look absolutely incredible um yeah i don't think you're you're gonna be too wrong there if he, if he's not top goal scorer he will definitely be out there 100 percent. oh yeah I, I, <clears throat> I, I, I imagine so as well but have you got anything else to add to this week mike have you got any other news or or interesting things you spotted in this week of football Yes, I Ooh, have on. uh, one very quick thing. Um, one of the things that we mentioned last week uh, in, in relation to a specific team that was sitting top of the league uh, <laughs> at that particular point. Yes. Uh, and then also looking at the manager's race that we would, we're, were speaking about. Yes. I think that Patrick Vieira has earned his right to not be sacked already just with that 3-0 stuffing of Spurs over the weekend. Um, I think looking at the way Spurs were were going into this, they were definitely the favourites for this particular game. I know they were playing away from home, but Crystal Palace looked all over them, 100%. I think Spurs went into it with the same mentality as what we did. We're going to walk this game. Um, And I think... Conor Gallagher, who scored the two goals for us, was on loan at uh, obviously West Brom last year, has has improved vastly since then, um, and was the driving force. I think if Eze wasn't out injured still, they would be a lot more dangerous than they are. Um, obviously, bought in Edouard, scored two mm. goals. Um, been walking the Immediate league impact. He's been walking the league in Scotland for, for a number of years. He was linked with a number of clubs. Crystal Palace got him, which I thought was a bit of a strange signing, considering the, the interest they had from West Ham, Everton. Um I think he was linked with Leeds at one point as well. Um and you think why why has he gone to Crystal Palace? Out of all of those teams, surely there's a, a more law to to others. But if he can do what he did in in uh, the SPL, um, and they can they were hard working one hundred percent. If they can get Edouard scoring, um, Eze back fit and Wilfred Sahar back to his best, uh, I think they they'll give anyone a game on their day. Um, you just got to hope that their day comes more often than not for Patrick Vieira. Yes, yeah, one hundred percent, and. It, it, I mean, even that signing was a bit of a strange appointment for me, but um, obviously being an ex-Arsenal legend, I wish him all the best. Um, obviously don't know too much about his managerial career. However, um, anyone that goes and beats Spurs, I think well, is, uh, is nice. And that, 
that was pretty much his, his post-match interview, wasn't it? I don't lose to Spurs. It doesn't happen. <laughs> I don't do it. Okay. So, yeah, and that that puts you... Well, they've had... Uh, I know there's only one point in it. It's still very early on um, in in the season, but obviously they've they've crashed from first down to sixth, and only you're only one point behind them. And saying that, for, considering the start of the season we had, we're on points off top. So two wins and a draw. Oh, that's it, mate. We can um, it's still all to play. We can for. get top. There's a good. There's a lot of football to be played still. Um. Yeah. Other than that, yeah. Other than, okay. well, uh, in fairness, <laughs> I, 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 the next, I, I'm happy we got Thursday night football because I think we're gonna, we're gonna give that a little bit of a romp in Europe. Um, but oh, I'm not looking forward to the weekend. If I'm honest, I might just sleep all day Sunday. Um, I, I don't think it's gonna be good watching. For, I, I hope it is. I hope we absolutely destroy them. But deep down in my gut, do I think we're gonna do it? We shall see. We shall I'm going to keep everything cross for you, mate. And I suppose then, right. on that note, this is a stressful person, just for anyone who's interested. Um, on that note, we will wait eagerly in anticipation for the next round of the Premier League, and we will see you next week. I have been Ian. I've been Mike. We have been on the air, and we are FDT TV. Make sure you are subscribed. See you next week. Thanks, guys.